I have chosen you, that you have chosen me. These words give so much strength and hope that we are all chosen by God and we come to the temple to just recharge and become more stronger and more fearless. There is someone who had chosen us and Holy Mother said, if you are in distress, just remember me. Just say, I have a mother. Say to yourself that I have a mother. So why do I fear? I have someone always protecting me, loving me, caring me, always. That hope and strength, that fearlessness and assurance, that love and care we feel when we come closer to God. And we're here after more than two months, again in the Vedanta Society, coming on Sundays for Sunday service. As I already I always say that Sunday service is not just a lecture, just not a talk, just not a reading, just not a music, just not a prayer before the talk begins. It's all together, it's being together, it's being with God and all inclusive. It fills our heart with some peace, some joy. We come back to our own self. Uh, that is the, our coming to the temple on Sundays, being together with everyone, being together with God, that's very important. And that feeling has to be there. I am coming to God, I'm coming closer to God. That feeling should be strengthened in, in our hearts when we come to the temple. Two days, and I welcome you again back after two and a half, about more than two months to the Vedanta Society and its activities after a nice summer. Not very hot this time, of course, for the last a few days. Otherwise, it has been a beautiful summer. I hope you all enjoy it and you were busy uh, in your work. If you're a teacher, busy in other things, do enjoy the vacation. I was also in vacation for two months, but visiting places, visiting devotees, visiting other Vedanta societies. And that was all joy, that was all service, that was all worship of God. Today's talk is transforming work into worship. Sri Krishna says in the Gita that, Nahi kaschit kshanam api jatu tishthati akarma krit. No one can live even for a moment in this world without work. Everyone, until he lives or she lives or anyone lives, it lives, it has to go on working. Work is inevitable. So why we work, we are dreaded with work, what is harm? That is our very natural thing to work. That would have been very nice if work would just give us joy. Every living creature aspires to be happy in life. Work was no problem if it could bring us all the joy and happiness. Sometimes this work brings us troubles. That is the problem with work. We don't find work as enjoyable as a prayer, so to say, as a relaxation, as to do the things that we like. The problem is not in the work. Problem is not liking the work. Problem is not having a definite technique to do the work. Work can be made of worship. People find joy when they are worshipping. I'll, I'll uh, relate what, what type of worships are there, what type of work are there. Everyone must work in the universe. That's how the creation is. <clears throat> but work has side effects. Some ill effects, like fire, you lit a fire from the firewood in winter, but it has smoke. If wind comes from the other side, you get the heat, no doubt, but you get a lot of smoke for breathing and for your eyes and it becomes trouble. Now this technique, is there any technique that I get only heat and I don't get smoke? I get only joy and happiness out of work and no trouble and side effects of the work. Is it possible to work that way? That the work gives me that joy which I find in praying to God. When I find, when I come closer to God, can work be done in such a way? I, we know that work and worship are very important. 
we work, and then we have a certain time for worship to God. We pray in our own way. Either we talk silently, or we do ritualistic worship, or we do anything. But is there any way the whole whole process of work becomes worship? All our living becomes a worship. Is there any way? So, what are the smokes of the work fire in here? One thing is we get very tired of work. So, tiredness is more mental than physical. When the work is enjoyable, then we, get, we don't get tired. When we have to look after our grandchildren on baby care, babysitting, uh, it's very happy. Whole day we're busy, but uh, you are so happy. Swami, I was so happy today. I was with my granddaughter whole day. But when you go to office, oh, when it will be five o'clock and I will leave the office, it's so much eight hours, it's too long, and you get tired. This tiredness is the mental thing and not able to adjust with the world. In work, there are conflicts. All that, that is the greater problem that makes you tired in work. You dislike the work, hate the work, which are because of conflict with the colleagues with the boss, with your ideas, and conflict results in classes. And this conflict and class always brings anxiety and tension. That are the side effects that work gives. Now, how to have fire without smoke, smokeless fire, this side effectless work, is it possible? Vedanta says, yes, it is possible. All work can be worship, as enjoyable as worship. Of course, worship also, if not done in right spirit, it becomes like a heavy work. Oh, you have to come, in the, there are many people, for, like the priests, there, there is, it's the work for them to come to the temple in right time, open the temple, and do the rituals, and mind somewhere over you, oh, hot, this treacherous thing, offer this flower, and somehow you finish, and then you finish the work in two hours, and they go, go and relax and have a cup of coffee. Like that other thing, the whole worship becomes a dread in work. But worship as such, the word says, it is very enjoyable, very joyful act when you come and to come and be closer to God. Worship is worship when it connects us with God. If it does not, if it cannot, we are not able to perform worship in the right spirit. Worship brings us peace and calmness, serenity. It makes our mind focused on some divine natural feeling. Worship can be of uh, many types. Not that always the worship that we do on celebrations with flower and central base and offering water and light and food. That is one way of worship. Worship can be just prayer. Just you are sitting in your, closing your eyes and try to feel the presence of God and just prayer. Just talk to Him. Ask from Him. Just that can be the prayer. It's conversation with God. In your mind, imagining the presence of divine within you, outside you. If within you performing is difficult, outside we give some symbol. If symbol is difficult, we try to find a place where it is more many people go and worship God, like a church or a mosque or a gurudwara or a temple. Then we call, then we feel that we are closer to God. Of course, worship also means ritualistic worship, going to the temple, kneeling down before the cross. Are offering flowers or seeing the, being one with the worshiper, the priest, and, and the chanting of Arati Mantra, all these are part of worship. Of course, worship also means reading scriptures and holy books. That is also equally valid and very important part of worship. Readings of Bible or Gita or some life of great saints, these all are make us closer to God. Of course, but the purpose of worship is making ourselves closer to God, connecting with God. Repeating God's name is another worship which corrects us very easily. It doesn't need any external thing, it doesn't need anything, just repeat the name of God and we feel inching closer and closer to God. Silently. Singing God's glories, singing songs, and God's glory, if you are alone, you can sing whatever voice you have. People often sing in, uh, in the washrooms. When they, when they go because nobody is there, they just sing on their own joy. Like that, when you are alone and you are not disturbing other person, you don't have sweet voice as Chitra goes. But even I can sing when I am alone in my room. Sing the glory of God, whatever song you hear. Dhruvatara um, or any old song, just you sing for yourself and try to feel you are in presence of the Divine.
That's the important thing, singing glories of God. When we sing the divine devotional songs, without thinking of God, without thinking our closeness to the divinity, it just becomes a work again. The thing is, we need to always be aware that we are in closeness with God, we are connected with God, we are in presence of divine. That makes the devotional song really devotional. Another thing of the prayer, of the worship is conversing about God or spiritual subjects. Always talking about something of God or divine thing or some spiritual topics. Do you know I read that story of like as we were reading like the story of Sadananda. We hear this, but we generally forget. It's so inspiring story. <coughs> person can be so unselfish, but it becomes a little worship, no doubt, when we hear with, uh, with attention. But when we go home, we can talk this with the person who, who is not here. You know, we have gone to temple, it's not, it's not hard in saying that, and we heard about a person of a devotee God, I don't remember the name, but he was very unselfish. Even someone was sick, he could impress him and could cool his burning body with his own cool body. And that person had burned and he was a smallpox patient without any fear of smallpox being infectious to that person. So much of unselfishness exists in this world. Maybe I cannot be that unselfish, I am afraid of death. But this fearlessness of, of, from death is there in the people, human beings like me and you. And maybe one day I will rise to that state when I will be not afraid of anything. I am not afraid of death. The only joy I will seek by giving some solace to others, some help to others. Maybe I will rise to that. You speak this, who knows who hears that, elevates himself or herself. That conversing about God, about scriptures, about spirituality, about something nice that you, you have heard. And you want to share. People often share the forwards nowadays in the in the in the internet. That works, but unless we talk about that, you know, people hear so many jokes. They say, "Can you say some joke?" Oh, I don't remember. I have heard so many, but I don't remember. I can't say. Why don't you remember? Because you don't speak that out. You don't part conversation in that. You don't have to convert jokes, but conversation of these things, these good thoughts, makes. Yourself, it refreshes and it might illumine other person with every child. So, this is a very nice worship of conversing about um, gods and spiritual subjects. Whatever good you listen, that it might be very good. Swami Vivekananda says, gist of all worship is to be pure and to do good to others. Swami Vivekananda, that thing was there. What is really becoming spiritual? What is becoming really religious? Loving God, meditating on Him, that is fine, that is very important. Connect, being connected to God, that is the essence of, um, essence of spirituality. And for that, you need the purity of mind. You have to be pure. And purity comes from selflessness. When you are non-egoistic, when you don't think only for yourself, you become unselfish, you become of service, you become of help to others, then you become pure. And to be pure and to do good to others. Atmano mokshakam jagat hitayacha. Something good to others has to be done to become spiritual. Without that, only trying to be spiritual is very difficult, almost impossible. And if it is impossible, then also it doesn't really give full of yourself. When you share your service to others, that time that makes you more makes your path way towards God more faster. It speeds up your spiritual progress. That's why the purpose of worship, Swami Vivekananda says, gist of all worship is to be pure and to do good to others. What are the side effects of worship? Is worship has any side effect? Yes, if we are not aware, like the world has side effect, worship can also have some, some side effects. If it is not done it properly, we are not aware of that. The one most difficult thing of worship comes when you are closer to God and you think you are pure and holy, then the thought may come, I am holier than that person. 
Oh, that person tells a lie. I never tell a lie. That person is so angry. Even in small things, he gets angry. I try to control our anger. He doesn't love God. See, he has no. He doesn't come into the temple. I every Sunday I go to the temple or church. So, like that holier than thou attitude is one of the very ill side effects of the holy persons or the person devotees of God. So, this side effect has to be eliminated. We have become this again. We have to remember the last sentence of the reading today. You have not chosen me. I have chosen you. If we are good, how we have become good? Because of the grace of God, He has chosen us. He gives us inspiration. He gives us some grace. That's why we are trying to be good. If another person is not so good, let's pray for him. That's the thing. All grace and humility, this arrogance might come. Another danger of um, side effect of worship is, worship might become an ordinary work if there is no love for God. As I said about the priest, if he does the worship without any love for God, it becomes just like a job, just like a work, you work somehow and you don't really benefit the purpose of the worship. Another thing often becomes difficult in side effect in the worship is obsession of observances for purification. Suchi bai, we call it Bengali. You want to be so pure externally with rituals. Everything has to be perfect. Speak and spend. And um, like you have to, um, washing hands, this all external purity gets overpowered than the internal purity. So external observances become very important. I have to have so many flowers. It should be red, violet, blue and yellow. Where is, where is that flower? One flower is not there, so he becomes angry. Where is the flower? How can I worship this? Like that the external observances become more important than the real feeling of the heart. So that is one danger you'll find. Oh, have you washed your hand? Have you taken a shower today? Have you changed your clothes? Go and walk. Like that thing happens with the, this obsession for the external purification. That is also often a side effect of uh, this worship. Of course it is important to be pure, but we should not be over obsessed with those things. That's only important thing. That more cleanliness of the heart to be seen than the cleanliness of the body or the clothes. That is very important. So with awareness of this side effect, we can, we can become really a worshipper of God, lover of God. Now how to eliminate the side effects of work? We are concerned that how can we transform the work into worship? The work, that thing, the defects of the world can be eliminated and it becomes a worship. The point number one is we have to be resigned, sacrifice, perfectly given to God and have no ego of ourselves by working. Just work for work's sake and just let God work. It's like God's work and just let God work. As if God will work everything and I'm just an instrument, an agent of God to perform the work. That type of feeling, not that I am producing something. It is God making me do and I'm so grateful God that you have chosen me. I have chosen you. That feeling we have to keep all burning in our heart. Always enlightening that. For that, we have to put out self, small self, I, that small I, and forget that self. More focus on the work, not that why I am working, I should, I will gain, what I will gain by that. More focus on the work itself than focus on myself. So trying to forget myself, that's the purpose of all, all spiritual practice is not trying to forget ourselves and focusing ourselves either to God or to the Atma or to the work. So forget the self and put the self out. Can work give us really that um, that type of feeling that what we have in the in, when we get through prayer, when you kneel down in front of God or the, on the cross or sit for meditation on the Brahman? Will work merely working in the office or working in the field or doing a job in the hospital will give us that that type of um, success? Will it lead to that highest spiritual goal just by working in the hospital? what one person does by prayer. Swami Vivekananda says, yes, of course. By work alone, men get to where Buddha got by meditation and Christ by prayer. 
There have been uh, Swami Sadananda Singh came, Swami Kalyanananda Ji, another Swami Vivekananda disciple. Swami Sadananda was disciple, one disciple of Swami Vivekananda. So Swami Kalyanananda, he was made in charge. He was in fact uh, the pioneer of hospital work in, in Kankal, in Haridwar. So when he went there, we never proposed to make a temple. He did never made a temple of Sri Ramakrishna there. The hospital was the temple and the patients were literally God. Even today, in Varanasi Shivasram, that is the ritual, they literally worship the patients with all these flowers and fruits and dhupam as we do God, deity. They go to the patient and worship and then they touch, the monks go and touch their feet as if they are touching the feet of Sri Ramakrishna. Every ailing patient becomes the image of God and they are treated that way. So, treating every patient as God and the hospital as the temple. So, if we could do that, what is the difference? And you don't have to, that was the ritual thing then, to, to, to reimpose ourselves that they are God, living gods, that as you worship Sri Ramakrishna in the temple, you can worship patients as God, that done one day in a year. But what, is, what other day you treat them? You worship them, you worship by changing their lineage, by asking them how are you doing today, by giving, feeding them medicine in time and food, nice food. That all the all ritualistic articles for worship, that is the 16 Swodha Sopachara Puja for the worship of patient gods. Swami Vivekananda said, where do we see God? This poor, illiterate, backward, all their gods. Worship them with right articles and you will be there. What Buddha went, Buddha went through, mm, through his unselfish word and knowledge and Christ by prayer, a person can go there by work itself. Sri Krishna also said in the Gita, same thing, that Janakas and others, they achieved, they achieved that thing, um, supreme goal. But work is always difficult, difficult in the sense, it has its some problems. So, when you start working, you go to your new place, so people will be first curious about you. Then you go on working, then people will ridicule you. This is, there are three phases that come through work. Thank you. May I request to just uh, put on the fly, this, um, what you call flight mode, out here, the, the cell phone that we build. So, mm, the work always goes, we should be aware that work goes through three phases. It goes through ridicule, first um, ridicule, ignorance and ridicule, then when you are working still, there might be opposition. When you work something pioneer, there might be opposition. That is very nature of work that happens. When we know this and are aware of this, then the work doesn't affect us. Otherwise, when somebody says something wrong, we are doing it the right way, or there are criticism, um, just criticism, for criticism's sake, it has no meaning, you are doing the right thing. But then we may become weak. I am doing so much, I am, there is so much of people not praising me, they are all opposition, but that's how the world goes. Ridicule, first ridicule, then great opposition, then comes acceptance. People accept, yes, you are right, I was sorry, my dear friend, I didn't understand that time, people will say you. So we should be always prepared for these three things when you work. Ridicule, then opposition, then acceptance will come at the end. And there are some words which we like and some we don't like. That's one problem. So they say, wise men are those who can make every work to their liking. To get the thing we like to work is very difficult. And sometimes we like for some days, some years, and after that we dislike that work. So intelligent person is he or she who can make the work allotted to that person to like, yes, I like this word. This thing, this liking thing is very much mental thing. Disliking and liking. The thing you like today, you may dislike tomorrow. The thing you dislike today, you may like tomorrow. Does it depend on? I want to like this. I, we often dislike a thing because we want to dislike that. I don't like that. It happened in my own case. This avocado food, fruit is a new for me here. I didn't like it. 
And somebody gave it very healthy, very nice. And somebody said, I really don't find any taste, I don't like, I just avoid it. Somebody said, Swami, it tastes like something of coconut, this um, young coconut kernel. So I liked that taste and they said, yes, yeah, that makes sense. And after that I have started liking it again. So like that we can like anything. With the work, new work, which I thought I would like that work, would have been better, that job if I could get. There's nothing like that. Any job we could like. So if we are intelligent, we will make anything liking and when we start liking the job, we find the joy in the job and that becomes worship. Worship gives us happiness, joy, peace of mind. The word will also give us peace of mind, joy and happiness if we deliberately try to like the job that we are doing. Yes, that's fine. And if we start liking, that liking depends on our intention, our, our trying to like it. Work also means always um, being of, um, we are living in the society, we want to help others. And helping others is a great job, great job, great work of joy. Something you do, you feel so happy in your heart. I have done something, you was in difficulty, and I did something. There is side effect, some problem. The problem with ego comes. Oh, if I didn't do, and after that you want some recognition, something in return, and say, I something, you forget, he doesn't say after some time, I did so much to that person and that person is not saying anything to me. That type, this karma, this work, this seva, this service has got that type of thing. If we do not, we are not intelligent. Instead of producing a lot of joy, its reaction is, 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 is sorrow, suffering, misery, unhappiness. I did so much and I earned unhappiness by my unselfish service. No, it was not that. Your selfish was not really, truly, 100% unselfish. You wanted some recognition. You wanted thanks. You wanted patting. That removed that want and it will be all joyful. So when you help others, you in fact help yourselves. That idea should be in our mind. Whom do I help? Whom do I serve? I serve myself. My all this karma will be, bad karma will go and there will be a lot of purity generated in my mind. I got an opportunity to help others, to serve others, to feed others, to work for others, to talk nice for others. So always that is a sort of blessing feeling, not that I did something great. Curbing ego. This ego tries to raise its head in any moment in different ways. We have to be very careful that we do not become proud of anything that we do. That I am very blessed that God made me do this. In fact, I did it help myself. Always the feeling is when you help others, you in fact help yourselves. In work, we often set a goal and uh, we think of how much we have achieved. That becomes a problem in goal. So, the karma yoga or making the work in the worship is mm, trying to mm, give as much attention to the means as to the goal. Forget the goal. First set the goal and then start working and pay attention to every step of your work. Jan sadhan tan siddhi. That is one saying. When you start working, you have set the GPC on right, GPS on the right uh, place, and then you start driving and full, pay full attention on the driving. Don't say I have to read there, 84 uh, Danforth Street, I have to read. Don't say that. I, wear, I have to turn to keep attention on that, and you will surely reach that place if your right path is right. So, work often becomes stressful. I have not achieved this. And this work also means spiritual practice also is the one problem. I have been doing so much for four years, doing so much Japa, you say to say Rama, Rama, I have been saying Rama, Rama, all that. But where is the effect? Then nothing has come. It seems I have not yet seen Rama. Rama doesn't come and I wanted so much of thing and pray to Rama, Rama, give me like, like a lottery or something. Nothing happened. I asked for one million dollars, at least ten thousand dollars, nothing. So what is that Swami, this Rama thing is not doing anything, no progress. So Rama thing will definitely have progress, have thought in the mind. First, the Rama is not for earning money. Rama is for earning Rama himself. It is much greater than earning uh, one million dollars. So that will come, but every step is joyful. Find joy in every step. Today you did your joy, you did your japam, you did your meditation according to what you should have done. Full attention, full mind focus. Be grateful and, and say to Lord that Lord, that's why in, in our tradition, when we perform uh, this um, spiritual practice even, even the fruits of spiritual practice are offered to God, Sri Ramakrishna, Paramastu. Even I don't want the fruits of action. 
It's all up to you. All is to please you, all is to serve you. My word, my spiritual practice, my japam, everything is for you. Now I am yours. What is what will happen to me? I have no care. You are there. Whenever you are in this place, think that I have a mother. I have Sri Ramakrishna, I have a mother. What do I care? So that type of feeling will come. The surrender, this resignation, that is the freedom from everything. That will slowly come by doing Rama Rama. By doing Jesus, Jesus, that will come. Swakarmana Tama Vyaktam Abhyakcha, Sri Krishna said. Worship Him through your duties, through your work. And how to do that? Do as Swadharma. As if that is your dharma, that is your worship. Try to, your duty is the greatest and the best. Feel that way and try to do it in the best way possible. Perform the work in the spirit of Yajna. That is said. All works are binding, has side effects, are bring misery. All works except the work done in the spirit of Yajna. Sacrifice, offering, worship. Do work in that way. Yajnaartha karmano nyatra loko em karma bandhana. All are binding. You are bound. You cannot be happy if you are bound. Only freedom can make you happy. So, work are binding. If it is not done in the spirit of yajna, sacrifice, worship, offering. Do the work in the spirit of offering. Always giving something. Offering something. Thinking about others. You are um, in a bank. Think, oh, I have served, given service to them. Think about the person. How can I serve? Whether the teacher or the bank officer or the medical professional or a businessman, business also survives when you think about others. If uh, Apple company only thinks about earning money, how can I make maximum amount and become rich? They will not become rich. They have to think how the people become happy with my products. That should be the main concern. So this thing, if I add that, they will enjoy more. It will be more beneficial. There comes the service and here thing comes. If I do this, they will be more happy. It will give something. And this money coming, becoming rich, is all this extra thing coming. It's something bonus coming to you. But the attitude, if it is totally for the service and totally for the thought of others, then everything survives and you become free. You are not bound by anything. It doesn't bring any imagery for the things. That's why skill in action is very important. We should perform the work with full heart and soul. Not that, oh, somehow I pass that, then it doesn't become karma yoga, doesn't become worship. This work doesn't become worship. Work to become worship has to be done in a very skillful manner. Yoga, karma, su kaushalam. Very skillful way. In a very mm, dexterity it should be done. And when the work becomes uh, like in a skillful way, when it is natural, efficient and graceful. It has to come naturally from you. Don't feel overburdened. That becomes your karma. Then it becomes efficient. You can do it in the best way possible. And that working in that way brings grace to you. He becomes very pleased and happy with the work. Perform action without longing for the result. This non-attachment brings peace of mind. Without peace of mind, the whole world becomes distasteful and disgusting. We need peace of mind. That prayer gives us peace of mind. Worship gives us peace of mind. The word should also give us peace of mind if we perform the work in a very efficient way, in a natural way, in a graceful way. It will give us peace of mind. Other very um, short things um, for this um, thing, making work and worship is if you are a devotee type of person. Swami Brahmananda used to recommend this. When you go and start work, sit on the chair of your office. So first in the beginning, well, may Lord I be able to serve, perform my work at the work at the yajna, at the offering, at the service. Go to the office, a lot of things coming, a lot of file, this, that work will be there, there will be all the college ideas, talking, this will be there. First beginning, remember God. First do an offer and offer salutation to God. Just thinking of God will bring that energy. You don't have to even pray, Lord, may I be able to do that five minutes before closing eyes. It's already nine o'clock and you are still in prayer, not that way. Just remember God. Just thinking of God gives us all power. 
Then Swami Brahmananda used to say, in the middle, we take coffee break, we take toilet break, so many breaks. With every break, can you just think of God? That gives you strength. You are always connected to that wholeness, to that yourself. So with every break, before you get up from the seat, just think of God. You can say Sri Ramakrishna or something, something. Something think of his, uh, his in form or his name or something. So that gives us connection. Everything, whenever you get up and whenever you sit. And at the end, offer your fruits of all work to God. Sri Ramakrishna, Lord Kai, you can have that prayer at the time. You don't have to rush home and that you have to go to be crowded. Is that one minute prayer? Lord, keep me with you always and make, see that I perform the Karma Yoga, that it becomes a process for my freedom. So that way it helps to perform every work into transform every work into action. Do every act for the love of God. When I work something, so is it an act? For the love of God. Will love with God be love with this? Will it be pleased with this? They say Bhagavad Pritya. <coughs> everything should be you should feel that God will be pleased if I do this. If I come on Sunday, Sri Ramakrishna will be pleased. I will think if I go and talk to my friends, Sri Ramakrishna will be pleased. If I can make people happier, something it affects them, Sri Ramakrishna will be pleased. Goal is the pleasure of Sri Ramakrishna, joy of Sri Ramakrishna, happiness of Sri Ramakrishna. Every act, if I cook nicely for the devotees, simple food, but nicely if I could, Sri Ramakrishna will be pleased. How was Swami, how was the list today? It was just very nice. Joy Sri Ramakrishna. Oh, God is pleased, not that Swami is pleased. Why is Swami like the food? God is pleased. Goal for God being pleased. My husband is happy with my work. My wife is pleased with me. Ultimately, all God will be pleased. I have a duty towards my husband, towards my wife, towards my children, towards my friends. Who is going to be pleased? By pleasing them, I am ultimately pleasing God. Bhagavad Pritya Hari Doshanam. Brother Lawrence is to say that when I take one step, that is also for the love of God. Everything I do, the love, it is for the love of God. I pick up a straw from the grass, from the ground. That is also I feel God will be pleased with that. That feeling that when I'm doing this, my ishta will be pleased. That's a great karma yoga. That's a great worship with every work, every action, every movement. It's a worship of God that becomes. And in the one thing in karma yoga is Seek and not avoid. That's very important. We often get attached to the work. That's one problem. We can, being free from the result of work, karma phala, is much easier than being free from, from attachment to work. So, this is my work. Why is it given to other person? That often happens. Karma yogi also often thinks. That becomes the little problem. That's why to become a perfect karma yogi is seek not, avoid not. Whatever comes to you, perform that well. But don't think that that is my right. Don't put it right. Like that, that happens. So if I am here in Toronto, it's not my right to be in the Toronto. Tomorrow, Velrama um, says, go from here to Faridpur in Bangladesh. I should be very happily going there because not secret, avoid, I cannot seek that, I want to go to Faridpur, that I cannot seek, then it doesn't become karma yoga. And if it is said, I should be very happy to go, because every act, wherever I am, it's all for the service of God. Whatever I do, it is for the pleasure of God. So that's what the karma yoga, very important definition is, seek not, avoid not. Whatever it comes to you, is allotted to you, you are supposed to do, do that. And don't avoid that. But don't seek if I could do that. That's why Sikhidna said, what you are working, that is your worship. And if you seek some other, what would be better? If a doctor thinks, oh, if, if I was pilot, there's so much salary, good, I would be better. I didn't become pilot. That's not karma yoga. If you, that work will not become worship when it performs medical work. The pilot thinks if I could be uh, like a businessman, so much money they get, I go where and there and I have to try so long, it's always dangerous. That doesn't become. That's why Sri Krishna said, whatever work is natural, you are trained, you have opted for that, take that as 
worship and stick to that. And, so, and, and, and he said, Swadharmi Nidhanam Shreya Paradharmo Payabha. Whatever is your natural, efficient, and graceful work, that is the best for you to perform that way. If you think about other person, something good and that was better, that is like dying. It's very dangerous to think that would be better. No, nothing. Whatever is to be done is, is all up to you, and that is the best. That is the karma yoga. It's very fine formula. Seek not, avoid not. They say that to be really close to God and become peaceful and happy, five simple things to be practiced. One is love yourself first. Very simple. Love yourself. We all love ourselves. But if we analyze, we really love ourselves. We love um, our car, our house, something of our related to our, and we totally forget ourselves. So ourselves, the real self, we forget. We do not, we do not have time or thinking for thinking of that. And we love our children, wife, husband, car, money, wealth, property, name, and fame. We love those things, but we don't love ourselves. So, first thing to be happy is love yourself, your real self, who am I, trying to find and taking care of that. Second thing is, do something to, for good for others, some help for others every day, some nice thing, nice word, nice act, something that always keeps you happy. Secondly, love your real self, do some good work, some good work, through thought, through speech, through action, something. Third, very easy is be forgiving. Try to forgive others. Something they don't remember. Everything that do some mistake in the world. Be so large hearted that okay, you have done, doesn't matter. Done and gone. Try be forgiving. Fourth is refrain from hurting others. Always be careful my word or my action or my thought. Is it good for others? Is it hurting others? Is it harmful? So always refrain if something is really hurting others in thought. So that will make you happy. That will make other person also happy. If you don't hurt others, then that person will be happy. You are not hurting others, giving him or her trouble. But more happiness comes to you because you have become so good. You don't think ill of others in any way. And you don't do anything that harms others. Refrain from hurting others. And the fifth and last is be positive in every outlook. Something good, try to positive is seeing something good in everything. There are bad, there are everything, every action, every thing that happens, happening, every person is a mixture of good and bad. Try to see goodness in others, goodness in the thing. There might be something so much cruel, so much bad, there might be something good. So always try to have that outlook, finding something good in the thing. So these five things, thinking of yourself, being something good to others, being forgiveful, always forgiving others, and refraining from hurting others, like himsa that's called, and being positive in everything, try to see something good in everything, everyone, that will really make us come closer to God and perform our, all our words will be transformed into, into worship and we become closer, closer, closer to God. And one day finally gets illumination and we find there is light. Sri Ramakrishna says, when one sees light in the, in the, in the heart, he says, what I see, ah me, what is this experience? I never thought there's so much of joy in when God comes to us, when that illumination comes to us, that we have never experienced in general thing. And that seeking that joy is the goal of the spiritual life.